Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, the general stock market has been quite shaky because investors are worried that persistent inflation might keep the Federal Reserve from cutting interest rates for longer than originally anticipated. On top of that, Tesla had an especially rough go, falling to a 52-week low after Deutsche Bank downgraded it, which is exactly what we talked about in our last video. Despite this being the case, I am still consistently buying into Tesla shares. But before we move on to other stock market news, let's quickly talk about Bitcoin. There is a huge catalyst coming up for cryptocurrency holders, and that would be in the form of the Bitcoin halving. If you didn't know, this halving event is actually built into Bitcoin's original code to cut the amount of new coins going into circulation in half every four years. The purpose of this is to thwart inflation and increase the cryptocurrency's value. Essentially, Bitcoin gets its value because of scarcity, because there is a limited supply. And according to Bitcoin's mysterious creator, which has a pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto, he designed the crypto so that only 21 million Bitcoins will ever exist. And since there can be no more or no less, that's exactly why the law of scarcity works so well for this cryptocurrency in regards to how it creates value. The reason why this is a big catalyst is because historically, halvings have coincided with large jumps in the cryptocurrency's share price. In one example, back in 2012, we saw the price of a Bitcoin jump from $12.35 up to $127 per share, which is great news. This is just one of the many reasons why investors are so excited about Bitcoin. And we also have to remember that Bitcoin reached a record high of over $73,750 in March. Again, this is more good news. The reason why Bitcoin set a new record mainly had to do with the new spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds being released by a multitude of various financial institutions. Obviously, Obviously, when people invest into these ETFs, it increases the overall price of Bitcoin. So overall, there has been a lot of catalysts in regards to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So I at least wanted you to be aware of that development. But now let's return to talking about stocks, because Meta Platforms, which is the parent company to Facebook and Instagram, recently launched their new AI model. Meta is integrating this new artificial intelligence assistant across all of their applications in its quest to compete directly with ChatGPT. You should also be aware that Mark Zuckerberg, who is the CEO of Meta Platforms, recently passed Elon Musk, who is the CEO of Tesla, as being the third richest person in the entire world. The main reason for this is because Meta's stock is increasing in their share price, while Elon Musk's Tesla stock is decreasing in their respected prices. And that's why we have seen a shift in the world's most richest people in regards to Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Yet this will not deter me from investing into either Meta Platforms or Tesla because I believe that they are both fantastic companies to hold in your personal portfolio. On top of that, we also have some great news in regards to Meta Platforms because they have an upcoming earnings report and their ticker symbol is META, ticker name Meta, to where they trade at around $478 per share and I personally hold them in my portfolio. But now let's talk more about Tesla and electric vehicles in general and I'm going to quote straight from the article which says this and I quote, EV makers are slowing their roll after making more plugins than folks want to buy, end quote. And I actually pointed this out quite a while ago, considering that EV manufacturers are making a lot of electric vehicles that people just don't seem to be buying because they are too expensive right now. We even see companies such as General Motors and Ford scaling back their electric vehicle production and factory spending in this regard. In the meantime, we've also seen Rivian and Tesla walk back their production targets for this year as well because the demand for electric vehicles is just not there right now. To try to bolster demand, EV makers are actually slashing the prices of their electric vehicles. But despite these price decreases, the average electric vehicle costs approximately $5,000 more than their comparative gas counterparts. On top of that, if you're planning a trip and you have an electric vehicle, you have to plan your trip according to the various charging stations on your trip. It's not like you can just go anywhere, because gas stations are far more plentiful than various charging stations. However, this has actually had an interesting effect because now people are gravitating toward hybrid vehicles, and that's why hybrid sales surged by 50%. 
Essentially, a hybrid vehicle uses two different types of fuel sources, and normally it would be electric and gas. But recently, we've also seen some hydrogen electric vehicles, which I personally think is the future. More good news comes in the form of Tesla, Ford, and Chevy, all following in Rivian's footsteps to roll out their own electric pickup trucks. And it seems that electric pickup trucks are extremely popular, so that would cover the EV news for today. So now let's move over from the EV sector over to the semiconductor stocks, which are all down today. Lately, investors have been feeling rather down about the semiconductor industry, because many stocks in this highly respected sector, which originally has surged due to the great momentum which has been caused by artificial intelligence, has recently turned it sour. Due to a recent earnings report by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, ticker symbol TSM, which I personally hold in my portfolio, this has caused a wide range of other stocks in their same industry to also fall in their respected share prices. As an example, Taiwan Semiconductor fell by around 3%, while storage chip specialist Micron Technology closed the day by nearly 5% down, while Texas Instruments slid by over 2%. Therefore, these negative earnings from Taiwan Semiconductor are having major reverberations throughout their entire industry. We even see a company such as Super Microcomputer, which a according to the article, is a semiconductor industry supplier that is widely expected to be a major beneficiary of the artificial intelligence revolution. The article goes on to say, the company has apparently elected not to pre-announce its latest quarterly earnings release, which has been something of a habit for it lately. Market players are speculating this is because the figures won't look so hot, end quote. So now Supermicrocomputer has two things working against it. First, we have some other companies in their same industry which aren't bringing in very impressive earnings results. On top of that, investors don't like ambiguity, so it's odd for Supermicrocomputer to not release or pre-announce their latest quarterly earnings release. And by adding ambiguity to the overall market, this is causing their share price to drop. But in my personal opinion, I would buy this company on weakness, and I also personally hold them in my portfolio. Portfolio. But now let's talk about some good news in regards to Paramount Global Stock, which has recently surged due to buyout rumors. Paramount is an entertainment company, and their ticker symbol is P-A-R-A, -A, ticker name Para, and recently the company's share price jumped by as much as 15%, and here's why. According to recent reports, the private equity firm named Apollo Global Management is in discussions to acquire the media company through a joint buyout bid with Sony Pictures Entertainment, so this is great news for all of the companies involved in my opinion. You should should also be aware that Apollo recently tried to buy out Paramount earlier with a $26 billion all-cash offer. Paramount ended up rejecting this offer and they actually got another bid from another company which we will talk about, but recently Apollo Global Management has come back in leagues with Sony to buy out Paramount. In my opinion, this is a very good development. A CFRA analyst even says the following, and I quote, Should there be a cash purchase for all pair shares, it is likely that Apollo, as a US company, would take network assets such as CBS and local TV stations licenses, while Sony could hold equity in the non-FCC license assets, such as movies, television programs, and others. And in my opinion, the best thing for Paramount shareholders would be for Apollo and Sony to buy out this company. However, we also need to remember that Paramount is also currently in exclusive merger talks with Skydance Media, yet shareholders have been adamant about publicly expressing their concerns over the terms and conditions of this particular particular deal in regards to the Skydance merger. In my personal opinion, I think Apollo and Sony obviously give Paramount a better deal, but in the meantime, Paramount is exclusively talking with Skydance Media right now, at least for the time being. So if you are an investor into this company and you own shares, make sure to express your opinion about why you would want Apollo Global Management and Sony to take over this company. The reason why it's obvious why Apollo and Sony would be a better buyout than Skydance would be because if Apollo and Sony buy out Paramount, investors into this company who own shares will be paid handsomely. On the other hand, Skydance wants to do something different than buy out all of Paramount shares outright, which is not going to benefit current shareholders. So if you are a shareholder in this company, always make sure to do your own research and express your opinions correctly. Next up, in not so good news, let's talk about Virgin Galactic, which recently plummeted in their share price by around 16.5%, and their ticker symbol is SPCE. If you didn't know, this is a space tourism company, which essentially gives people very expensive rides up to space and then back down to Earth just for the experience. The tickets to even get a Virgin Galactic flight are extremely expensive, and normally they only go out to hyper-rich or ultra-rich individuals. But what specifically caused their share price to crash? Well, I'll tell you. 
the company filed their regularly scheduled stockholder meeting, which is going to be held on June 12th. And the agenda was normal, with electing directors, approving an auditor, and setting executive salaries. But there was one problem here, and that's because Virgin Galactic will propose a reverse stock split. So what does this mean ultimately for this company and their shareholders? Well, I'll tell you. According to the article, a reverse stock split is the opposite of an ordinary stock split. Instead of giving investors more shares, it actually leaves them with fewer shares. Currently, Virgin Galactic will propose anywhere from a 2 for 1 split to a 20 for 1 stock split. This means that if you own around 1,000 shares of Galactic stock, you could actually leave this reverse split with only 50 shares. However, I do want to make one thing clear that a a lot of investors don't understand about ordinary stock splits or reverse stock splits. And this would be that if somebody is invested into this company, their value in their investment will not change. Only the number of shares that they own change, but the actual value does not change. So if you have $1,000 invested in this company before the stock split, you will also have $1,000 after the stock split. So if it doesn't change someone's investment value, then why would Virgin Galactic do this? Well, let me tell you. The main reason for this is because the company is trading below $1 per share, and essentially the New York Stock Exchange has a rule to where if you are trading below $1 per share for too long, you will be delisted from that particular exchange. However, a reverse stock split could put their stock up to $2 or even at $20, depending on what type of split they are going to do. And overall, this is actually good for this company to do, especially if you want them to be continually listed on the public stock market. However, you should also know that companies which perform reverse stock splits normally don't work out over the long term, but hopefully Virgin Galactic can turn that around and prove the haters wrong. In my personal opinion, I do not hold this company because I don't think they are a very good company right now, but I am keeping my mind open to determine whether or not this could be a good future investment to hold, but in the meantime, I do not hold this stock. Next up, let's talk about Verizon and AT&T, which are two gigantic telecommunications companies. First, let's start off talking about Verizon, and their ticker symbol is VZ, and they are set to post their first quarter results on a Monday before market opens. For some context, Wall Street analysts expect Verizon to post revenues of $33.23 billion, which would imply a fall of 1%, and this obviously means that the company could decrease in their respected share price. On top of that, their earnings per share also known as EPS, is expected to decline over 6% down to $1 and at 12 cents. Again, this should push their overall share price lower. Now, there is good news for this company, which is going to come a little later in the year, because if interest rates decrease, this is going to heavily impact Verizon in the best way possible, considering that 26% of their debt is variable. If you didn't know, variable debt and the interest that is owed on this debt varies between higher numbers and lower numbers, and it essentially is pegged off of the prime rate. So when the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates sometime later this year, this will lower the amount of interest that Verizon has to pay on their existing debt, so this is going to act as a phenomenal catalyst for Verizon later in the year. So in the short term, Verizon is actually going to decrease in their share price and then pop off later. And an RBC analyst essentially says the same thing by saying, and I quote, we expect Verizon to demonstrate wireless service growth of 3.1% year over year and continue the momentum in gross additions. However, we see churn management as one of the company's key priorities for full year 2024. So he's essentially saying for the full year of 2024, they could have a relatively good year, but in my personal opinion, in the short term, it's going to be quite bumpy. So now let's move on to their rival, which is none other than AT&T, whose ticker symbol is T. AT&T is also anticipated to post their first quarter results, but that will happen on a Wednesday, and they're expected to bring in earnings per share of 53 cents per share, implying a fall of over 11%, and the revenue is expected to come in at $30.53 billion. This means that just like Verizon, AT&T will also suffer in their share price in the short term. But don't let that dissuade you from looking further into these companies, and here's why. Right now, Wall Street analysts, as well as Seeking Alpha analysts, are very bullish and positive on a VZ and T-stock, and they are rated as a buy rating. 
On top of that, over the last two years, Verizon has beaten earnings per share estimates 75% of the time, while they have beaten their revenue estimates 50% of the time. Likewise, AT&T has beaten their earnings per share 88% of the time, while they also beat their revenues 50% of the time. So these are just some things that you need to be aware of in the short term. But overall, I would rather invest in these companies after they start to downtrend in their respected share price, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Next up, let's talk about some of the top stock picks in artificial intelligence. And this article correctly highlights companies like NVIDIA, Broadcom, Marvel, Monolithic Power, Power Systems, Taiwan Semiconductor, ASML, AMD, Intel, and I would also throw in Super Microcomputer as well as Palantir Technologies. But if we're specifically talking about semiconductor stocks, I would completely agree with Oppenheimer's top stocks, which would be none other than NVIDIA, Broadcom, Monolithic Power Systems, and Marvel. According to Oppenheimer analysts, these companies will do great things in the semiconductor sector, and I completely agree with them. So these are clearly stocks that you would want to watch out for, and I personally own all of those companies in my portfolio. Now let's talk about the upcoming catalysts for other stocks throughout the next week, because we are going to receive earnings reports from companies like Visa, Tesla, PepsiCo, Texas Instruments, UPS, Lockheed Martin, and General Motors on Tuesday, April 23rd. After that on Wednesday, other notable companies will also release their earnings, which would include Meta Platforms, IBM, AT&T, Boeing, Chipotle, General Dynamics, Hilton Worldwide, as well as Ford Motor. And then next on Thursday, other companies will also be reporting their earnings results, which would include companies like Microsoft, Alphabet, which is the parent company to Google, Merck, Caterpillar, Comcast, Intel, and Altria Group. Then lastly, on Friday, you should be aware of these following companies that are going to have very good earnings catalysts, which would include ExxonMobil, AbbVie, and Chevron. And that will conclude today's latest stock market news updates and the best stocks to buy. So with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these companies. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.